Thank you very much for beginning level one, part two, the key AV essentials. Um, last section, level one, part one, we discussed uh, an introduction to key digital. And uh, basically, as this curriculum progresses, it's just going to be building one step at a time. And the next uh, reasonable place to go, uh, as we really begin to introduce you to some uh, specific product product categories that Key Digital offers is what we like to call the essentials. Um, the essentials of any AV installation is going to be based on having at least one source and one display and an interconnect cable in between and how do you enable that. Now again Key Digital has the full circle of video connectivity. If you have many uh, many sources, many displays, um, and you'd like to have any of those displays, view any source at any time in any combination, uh, regardless of the source's uh, format type, etc. Um, Key Digital enables that. Um, but again, in every application, you've at least got one source and one display, and there's actually a variety of uh, options as to how to connect that, how to make that connection possible so that you don't have to have the display and the source located right next to each other and, uh, and instead can tuck away some of your equipment making for a nice clean installation. So as we recap you on the product categories that Key Digitals offers, um, does your customer, does your client need to extend video, audio, control signals with Cat5 or 6 cabling? that's going to require a Cat5 or 6 Balan device. And certainly, this is something we're going to talk about in length today. Um, a Balan could be part of a larger system with many sources, many displays, or a Balan could be that interconnect between just a single source and a single display. So we'll definitely talk about that, and we'll go over the Key Digital Fat Cat series offerings um, to, uh, to really uh, train you on on the breadth of the uh, of that product category for us um, in a system where you may have many sources to one display uh, it's going to require a switcher not really going to touch so much on that today uh, one source to many display would require a distribution amplifier many sources to many displays requiring a matrix switch converting those various video and audio formats and resolutions uh, to be a single cable interconnect a video processor um, and finally, uh, interconnect, HDMI interconnect cable for all distances up to 75 feet. That would be the HD Python series of HDMI cables that Key Digital offers. And that's going to be where we go next here, um, discussing the HD Python series HDMI cables. <coughs> um, so when we look at the complete connectivity solution, again, we're going to emphasize the one-to-one. -one where we uh, alluded to earlier, the many's to ones, the ones to many's, the many's to many's. Here we are with a one-to-one, -one, uh, really the foundation of any AV system. Every application has at least one source and one display to connect. So here we're going to teach you to master this key of, uh, of your AV install. Uh, we'll talk about HDMI cables. We'll talk about balance. Um, <clears throat> HDMI cables uh, from Key Digital. What separates us from the competition? Well, you'll see, uh, you'll know by the end of this training how we can increase performance, the ease of use, the profit in every application. So let's start off by talking about just using a, a, a simple cable as an interconnect between source and display. <clears throat> you'll have, we're going to break it down between digital and analog. Under the digital umbrella, HDMI, of course, being the leader uh, in, in digital connectivity, DVI, digital video interface, um, sort of the pioneer, if you will, in digital video, and DisplayPort, which is somewhat of a new uh, connectivity type. In the analog world, we have VGA, most commonly found in uh, computer uh, source and uh, display type applications. Component video, very common and also a means of, uh, of um, extending high definition content. Composite video and S video, um, standard def connection types. Okay, so let's look a little deeper at your digital video connectivity options. HDMI. Well, certainly this is a uh, four letter word in the AV industry, and of course, I, I, I kid. But um, it has taken a number of years for 
uh, installers to really begin to become confident in installing digital video systems, uh, especially with HDMI. Um, there's a number of factors why uh, installers didn't take too well to HDMI. Um, at Key Digital, we've always offered a solution for the handshaking and these sorts of things that's enabled through HDMI where some other manufacturers did, did not. But certainly in a one-to-one -one application, HDMI is very good, very reliable. Um, it's the most rapidly growing video and audio connectivity in the world with uh, some very uh, huge figures as to the amount of uh, devices sold, whether it be source, display equipment, etc., with HDMI connectivity. Um, it's found in just about every source and display type available in, 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 in both consumer and professional markets. It's a single connection that carries video, audio, and data, uh, such as control data, CEC, consumer electronic control, enables one, uh, your display to turn on and to power on other devices in, in its system that are uh, connected uh, via HDMI. For example, uh, it supports not only standard def and, and high def resolutions, uh, also, of course, uh, your computer type resolutions, uh, right now up to 4K by 2K resolution. Uh, 4,000 by 2,000, very, very high, and that's definitely the um, beyond 1080p and really the uh, the only place to go from 1080p. Um, you can have not only support of two-channel audio, but also your, for example, Dolby and DTS 7.1, 7.2 audio type formats are supported over HDMI. It supports HDCP, high definition copyright protection. Many uh, identify this as the main factor for its uh, popularity in, and the reasoning for uh, uh, the industry to be uh, behind the HDMI connectivity so strongly is, is because of its support for HDCP. Um, as we said, it's, it's found on just about every source and display uh, uh, device out there. Uh, most commonly, your set-top boxes, Blu-ray players, uh, computers now have HDMI even perhaps, I dare say, at, even today, uh, more commonly uh, are you able to find an HDMI port on a laptop computer than a VGA port um, if you're out there shopping for a new laptop. It's not only on uh, uh, your, your professional cameras, but also your consumer cameras, video conferencing, of course, gaming. Gaming has certainly uh, uh, been one of the uh, gaming uh, sources have been one of the sources that have really taken advantage of uh, high definition content um, and even uh, frame rates beyond say uh, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second for example, really taking advantage of that uh, high bandwidth that's allotted by an HDMI connection. Um, digital signage sources even even your smartphones today have HDMI connectivity options, and and that just speaks to the uh, popularity of this connection, where everything's going digital, everything's going HDMI. Um, for your display equipment, it's uh, commonly found not only on your consumer displays but also your professional displays. Uh, computer monitors certainly have it. Projectors. AV receivers where you're not only uh, switching and passing video signals but also uh, the, the, uh, the display if you will for the 7.1 audio formats in your, in your uh, multi-channel audio formats. Video conferencing devices are not only sources but also displays and you see them listed as such. Um, <clears throat> also under the digital umbrella you have DVI and DisplayPort. DVI, Digital Visual Interface. Um, it was uh, initially um, on, it was the first digital video connection on a lot of displays, uh, even your home theater, your uh, consumer type displays had DVI initially uh, before HDMI really became the clear cut winner as to which connectivity, which digital connectivity, HDMI or DVI is going to be the uh, the connectivity the industry chooses to move forward with. Uh, HDMI, of course, won that battle, if you will. Um, it still has widespread acceptance in the PC, uh, PC industry. And um, indirectly, uh, in the consumer world as well, uh, via HDMI. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, actually, with a simple uh, adapter, a DVI-D uh, 
uh, digital uh, DVI type or even DVI-I is uh, uh, carrying a digital signal and, and, and with an HDMI uh, adapter piece, you can plug in a DVI source into an HDMI display for the most part. Um, you carry video and data on a single connector, but there's no audio. Uh, supports your HD resolutions just as an HDMI does. Uh, whether it be standard def, high def, or your computer VESA type resolutions. It does support HDCP, though um, it's not as guaranteed as basically an HDMI connection would be that your DVI display uh, supports HDCP. And that could potentially in the install world result to some uh, HDCP problems. We talked about its compatibility with HDMI connectivity via, via adapter. Um, <clears throat> and also DVI-I. DVI-D. What does it mean? Um, those are two uh, digital connectivity uh, types uh, supported by the DVI connector. DVI-D, DVI digital. DVI-I, DVI interlaced. Uh, I'm sorry, integrated. Uh, those two, uh, DVI-I and DVI-D, uh, are digital uh, uh, digital signals going through the DVI connector. Um, <clears throat> DVI-A, and DVI-I, uh, that integrated again, could go both ways actually. It could be analog or digital, where DVI-A is strictly analog, just as DVI-D is strictly digital. Now, um, I do not actually have a, uh, uh, a, a picture, uh, a pinout of a DVI-I, DVI-D, DVI-A connection, but you should certainly Google that uh, and, and, and take note. There's also um, dual link DVI, uh, it would be another type of connection with DVI. Uh, made possible there, and that is a digital um, DVI connection. Where do you commonly find uh, DVI on your sources? Computers, video cards, video conferencing type devices, uh, on your displays, computer monitors, projectors certainly uh, commonly feature DVI connections because a projector really doesn't have much need for audio uh, being fed to it video conferencing, and uh, again, your legacy HD displays where uh, it, it originally featured DVI, but uh, that was before HDMI was really the clear-cut um, connectivity uh, winner, if you will. Also, we'll touch on DisplayPort here. Uh, let's introduce you to that. DisplayPort is somewhat new, um, although most uh, installers in the commercial market are certainly familiar with and have researched DisplayPort, uh, primarily because it is a locking digital connection where DVI was as well. HDMI not so much. It's more of a tension-based connector, and that was uh, that is one of the common complaints of HDMI. Here comes DisplayPort offering a locking connectivity. It was designed to uh, to replace DVI and VGA. So this is uh, again the computer world, the VESA, uh, VESA. Um, uh, connectivity to replace DVI and VGA. It's compatible with HDMI fully at this point um, via a, an adapter dongle, but it's not expected to displace HDMI. What do we mean by that? Well, you're going to continue to see DisplayPort on your computer type displays and sources, uh, but it's just not likely um, that it's going to happen that, uh, that DisplayPort displace HDMI in the consumer world where you have your Blu-ray players, consumer displays, etc., as we listed previously, uh, featuring HDMI connections now. It's not likely that you're going to see DisplayPort connections on those instead of HDMI connections anytime soon. And uh, again, <clears throat> compatible with HDMI basically fully, um, so, so of course it does support that HDCP um, fully as well. As we look in the analog uh, connectivity for high definition. Uh, the most common connectivities, uh, VGA, video graphics array, and component video. For VGA, it's the most common PC video connectivity, 15-pin uh, connector carrying uh, that basically separates the video signal into five channels, if you will. Red, green, and blue are all for coloring. Um, red, green, and blue. Uh, you have your sync uh, split into two channels. A horizontal, uh, excuse me, horizontal sync and a vertical sync. Um, so it's also commonly referred to as RGBHV. And then there are, uh, of course, th those just being five pins and then plus their ground. Um, but of course, there are a number of additional pins of those 15 kin, uh, pins that carry data type information. Uh, VGA is actually the uh, original. Um, connectivity to support EDID, extended display identification data, 
uh, enabling that computer monitor to send its um, acceptances and, and compatibilities and preferences to the computer that it's connected with as its source. Um, that is one of the pins, uh, the DDC pin on a VGA connector, where it was really taken to the next level with HDMI. Um, so that's just one of the data. Uh, pins on a VGA connector, for example. Uh, supporting HD resolutions, um, <clears throat> however, it should be noted that your PCs uh, on your VGA output, uh, you know, you think about your computer monitors, they're very widely accepting of, of a number of displays, a lot more so than a component video uh, display is. Um, however, it should be noted that your PCs, yes, they may offer uh, a wide variety uh, from 800 by 600 or maybe even possibly lower uh, all the way up to you know 1920 by 1200 and everything in between but all of those you should be noted are progressive resolutions there are no interlaced resolutions not standard anyhow from a computer um, and uh, VGA would support all of those after all it's just a, a connectivity in between but uh, from your source and your display there and your computer side it should be noted computers security DVRs are certainly a common source where a VGA connection is found video conferencing again digital signage uh, the displays that are commonly connected via VGA um, consumer and professional displays consumer uh, especially nowadays uh, a PC is actually uh, considered part of your entertainment uh, where it used to just be the DVD player, maybe going way back to the VCR as well, um, and the cable satellite set-top box. Um, just look at the studies. Uh, computers are really becoming a, uh, a, a viewing source for, for your entertainment even with uh, online streaming uh, services such as Netflix, um, YouTube, uh, Hulu, Vudu, uh, all of these sorts of... Uh, online streaming contents. Um, so it's on, it's featured commonly now on your consumer and uh, displays, professional displays, of course, computer monitors, projectors, and again, video conferencing also being a possible uh, display uh, in uh, as well as a source. When we look at component video, where is that commonly found? Uh, consumer HDTV equipment. Red, green, blue, um, it, all the video information is three channels. Red, green, blue, as the VGA connection uh, was just coloring. In the component connection, blue and red are your coloring. Uh, green is your sync. It's all carried on that one connection. Uh, what you call that actually is the uh, luminescence, whereas the red and blue are the chrominescence of that signal. Um, <clears throat> so if you had a component video source and a component video display, and you just connect green to green on each side, uh, you're actually going to get picture. No color, but you'll get the full picture. Um, and then after that, uh, you connect your red and your blue, and now you will see the full uh, coloring array as well via component video. It supports SD and uh, HD resolutions. We say limited because usually your displays are somewhat picky on the component inputs. Uh, most, most component inputs on displays are very picky. In fact, if you think about it, it's just four resolutions. Your 480i, 480p, 720p, and 1080i, and that's it. Now, there was uh, a number of you, of course, will argue that uh, component video is actually capable of uh, sending uh, or of, of extending 1080p. It does support the bandwidth. In fact, every key digital component part, in fact, even supports 1080p over component video. Uh, but finding the source display uh, and display equipment to support that is really uh, where you're going to run into the challenge. Um, Set-top boxes again, cable and satellite. Your DVD, Blu-ray, Blu-ray players. Well, this is uh, this is a whole other can of worms. There, um, what is now called the analog sunset that many of you know very well by now. Uh, Blu-ray players. Uh, it was effective January first, two thousand and eleven. Were no longer um, basically uh, started the phasing out of of the component video connection on that Blu-ray player, so as to uh, support and bolster that. Uh, HDCP, high definition copyright protection, really not possible over an analog video uh, connection. Um, so uh, as of January 1st, 2011, they limited the output resolution of a Blu-ray uh, to be 480, whereas uh, your 720p, your 1080i, no longer an option. Um, and through uh, 2013, they will fully um, phase out 
component video connections on Blu-ray players. Is that going to affect your set-top boxes? Well, it's, 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 it's not the same um, uh, governing board over cable satellite companies. That would be, of course, the FCC, uh, the decision makers who decided to, uh, to phase out component video on your Blu-ray players are, uh, are, are not the FCC. And um, so really right now, just because it's happening on Blu-ray players, doesn't mean it's going to happen on cable satellite boxes. Um, it, so, you know, we can't really say one way or the other if that will happen, but just keep that in mind that uh, just because it's happening in one space doesn't necessarily mean it's happening in the other. Um, consumer displays, projectors usually support component video. It should be noted that uh, many times a projector may have a VGA type connection uh, or a 15 pin connection um, where uh, it will support either that VGA, RGB, HV signal or component video. You may have a setting uh, that, that it may be necessary to tell it, hey, we're sending component video here now instead of VGA. You should look for the sync on that green connection uh, versus the green, the G connection just being color in the case of an RGBHV signal. As we move to the uh, standard definition uh, connectivity types in the analog world, you had composite video. Um, of course, still, still out there in many cases. Um, composite video supports strictly standard definition 480i, 576i. Uh, for those of us stateside who might not be fully uh, familiar with 576 uh, resolutions, that is a, a standard in, in Europe, for example. They don't have 480i, 480p. They have 576i and 576p. Slightly higher resolution still considered to be standard definition. All the video information encoded onto just that one channel. You have signal and ground, of course, of a composite video connection. Where do you still find this? Well, uh, legacy VCRs or even just VCRs in general are, are still going to feature composite. So if you're uh, installing AV into the church um, vertical or educational vertical, composite video, of course, still very much a part of, of your job, of your uh, applications, and how you deal with that will uh, we'll get into probably with a switcher scaler and that sort of thing. A set-top box usually still features that uh, composite video connection. Gaming devices, CCTV cameras are especially common uh, to have composite video, and uh, but even as the security industry um, transitioned into a higher definition cameras, network cameras, these sorts of things. Um, you can get some fantastic picture quality that of course composite video would not be capable of displaying. Um, basically your standard definition displays, any consumer display still should have support for composite video, uh, maybe just one connection for it. Um, projectors, AV receivers still have that support for composite video. Um, I don't, of course it probably will go the way of the dodo bird but um, but really, it's not viewed so much as a threat uh, for piracy and that sort of thing as component video is because, again, it's limited to standard definition, and they're really trying to protect that high-definition content. S-video stands for separate video, where composite is uh, all in, encoded onto one channel. Um, S-video is slightly higher, even though it's still 480i. Um, it's, the video signal is encoded onto two channels, again supporting 480i, 576i. Um, you can use uh, uh, com, uh, composite adapters, com, uh, S-Video to composite adapters or even S-Video to component dongles basically. In other words, taking that S-Video uh, pin connection and uh, breaking it out onto a single uh, RCA or even three RCAs. Um, that would just be something you'd probably buy as an accessory from your local supplier. Um, where do you see this? Pretty much the same places as you would see a composite video connection um, for the sources. Okay, so now that we've gone over the connectivity options um, for your analog and your digital video systems, uh, just again focusing on the one-to-one, -one, one source to one display, how are you going to connect that? Um, oftentimes, as we said, HDMI is going to be that connectivity and Key Digital for years has offered um, a very good selection of HDMI cables that is really focused on the integrator and installer, the uh, custom AV 
installation. Uh, not the consumers. We're not throwing a lot of marketing fluff out there. Our approach simply is the best cable at the best price, the latest features, bar none. Okay, and so we break that down into uh, three different categories, but uh, just keep in mind here, and we'll probably say this a few times, so forgive us in advance for the redundancy, um, but whether it be our uh, premium residential, our basic commercial, or our premium commercial offering of HDMI cables, they all support the same specs, they all support the latest features, the same speeds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that are just uh, best in class features, okay? Um, what are the differences? The differences are it, premium residential is a braided uh, jacket, if you will, that braided what we call TechFlex jacket. It is um, not approved for uh, in-wall installation. It is a VW1 rating, which of course has some resistance to, uh, to fire and to heat and that sort of thing, but it's not uh, approved by fire code in the US or Canada to go behind the wall. We'll talk about what uh, what cables you would go for if that's your need. But for rack interconnects, for simple system, home theater or, uh, or AV rack uh, interconnects, um, or just rack dressing, as you may have many uh, HDMI sources uh, going into matrix system, uh, etc. This is ideal. Additionally, uh, at the display side where you may have a ballon uh, going out of that receive ballon to the display uh, with a short 1.5 foot cable, the premium residential line is, is ideal for that. 21 gigabits per second, so the fastest speeds out there. It's really just the best video cable in the market today. Full support for 3D, 4K resolution, uh, 4K by 2K, um, audio return channel and Ethernet over HDMI as well. Um, it's, uh, it's each and every HDMI cable that Key Digital ships you has been pre-tested in our manufacturing facility before shipment so that you're not going to open up uh, uh, cables and have, uh, have a problem on hand. And so uh, in, the, in the amount of years that uh, I've been working for Key Digital's technical group, uh, I can count the number of HDMI calls on one hand. It's, uh, they're just very good, very reliable, and essentially um, not subjecting you to that, again, marketing fluff that a lot of HDMI cable manufacturers are known for. Uh, we won't mention any names. So as we uh, continue to the basic commercial, now what does this mean? Again, all of the same features, all of the same te uh, specs in support of the latest HDMI features. Uh, however, we have a CL3 rated uh, jacket here. CL3 is fire code rated in the USA. Uh, also approved in Canada what is called an FT4 uh, rating uh, so that the fire inspector comes and uh, sees that this cable has a CL3 rating that's printed on the jacket and says okay we got the CL3 rating go ahead put up that drywall and, uh, and everything's good to go. So this is approved for in-wall installations the uh, basic commercial series starts at a foot and a half and uh, currently goes up to 25 feet, uh, 25 feet in length there. So it doesn't have to just be uh, in, in wall, it could also be in your rack. A lot of, uh, a lot of integrators out there and, and, and the professionals of, uh, who are dressing those racks and, and making all of those interconnects prefer to work with a CL3 uh, rated cable versus uh, one with the braided jacket. Uh, for that nice clean professional look. Um, just really depends on your preferences, your client's preferences, if it is one that's not going to go in the wall. Of course, if it is in the wall, um, CL3 rating is the way to go. Um, as we look at HDMI cables, and uh, this is a, a sort of chart that we will be um, uh, analyzing throughout this section, level one, part two. Um, <clears throat> HDMI cables, essentially, uh, HDMI is not like an analog video connectivity where it is a, a, uh, a slope effect. The further you go, the uh, softer the image may get or the uh, softer the audio may get. Um, HDMI is a cliff effect. <clears throat> Many people identify this cliff as approximately 30 feet at 1080p or 60 feet at 1080i. After all, 1080p is double the bandwidth of a 1080i signal. Now, where Key Digital comes in 
with our premium commercial line of cables that we will introduce you to here is with this EQ correction. And as a result, <clears throat> we're able to essentially uh, offer uh, 125 feet uh, guaranteed. Now that was uh, with their technology, we were offering a 100 and a 125 foot HDMI cable that fully supported 1080p uh, and even 3D signals. And, and so uh, as we take a look here, at the offering of the premium commercial line, you can see the LED head um, that is built in. Um, imagine that uh, slope effect and uh, in the analog world. And really, you do get that in the HDMI world. You do get a slope effect. But as you saw from the previous table there, there is a threshold, a threshold for data loss. And if there are one too many ones and zeros dropping, and that's essentially that data loss is what what gives you that slope effect? Um, maybe I should do my slope uh, uh, hand gesture uh, this way. Um, <clears throat> as your ones and zeros begin to drop, um, you could usually still salvage that uh, in a very limited amount of data loss. Um, in HDMI, there's a very low threshold for that data loss, though. And one too many ones or zeros miss. Uh, are, are missing by the time they get to that display and you could either you'll begin to end up with uh, what's called digital sparkle or it looks like a little salt and pepper on the screen or even total signal loss uh, you might have flickering in between but total signal loss nothing at all so that's the beauty of an HDMI uh, interconnect is that if you're playing by the rules uh, and you have a, a HDMI cable such as Key Digital that was out there offering at 125 feet, currently at 75 feet with our current offerings, um, it's guaranteeing that, well then uh, you know that it's going to look just as good as if it were a three foot cable in between the source and the display. It has no tolerance or very low tolerance for signal loss, um, but uh, as many manufacturers out there still do offer say a 35 foot cable, 40, 45, 50 and beyond, um, yet have no special engineering to guarantee that that'll work for you, you can end up with problems. You have to really rely on the source uh, being very, uh, very strong signal in the display, having a very strong input uh, receive chip versus uh, having some weak uh, and lack of tolerance for signal loss. Um, key digital premium commercial cables available uh, starting at 30 feet and going all the way up to 75 feet again. Um, as that one, those ones and zeros may begin to uh, uh, become lost, they feature built-in equalization. Doesn't require any power. It is simply a one directional cable. You'll see bright yellow tags that say source and display. And that display side has the equalization that will restore those ones and zeros, bringing them back within that threshold as they may have been lost and, and dipped below that threshold previously without an active equalization. And so each and every one of Key Digital's premium commercial cables, again, lengths 30 feet to 75 feet, um, feature their own proprietary engineering to ensure that they will work from point A to point B, even if uh, in between point A and point B is 75 feet of distance. Um, so that really separates us from the competition out there where a lot of people may uh, stop making cables at lengths beyond 30 feet. Key Digital not only goes beyond those but is able to guarantee it and, uh, and a lot of installers in the field certainly respect the fact that we can whereas uh, some some of those lesser cables that are offered in a sandwich bag, for example, there's really no difference between the engineering of a six-foot cable and their 50-foot cable. It's exactly the same, just a longer piece of wire in the middle. And that's not how Key Digital does it because uh, our installers, our partners, certainly rely on us and count on us to deliver uh, performance and reliability with every single Key Digital piece they install. So as we look um, and we talk about a few times the HDMI standards, HDMI.org. Um, <clears throat> HDMI.org is uh, the governing board of HDMI standards. And, um, and the current standard as, uh, as of this recording is HDMI 1.4. And actually HDMI uh, starting at 1.0, that was quite a few years ago. So it is currently on 1.4. And, and if you take a look at the timeline of you know, evolution, this is not like 
excuse me, a typical uh, computer technology where six months later you've got, if you're trying to keep up with the, the bleeding edge, you have to go out and buy all new gear. Uh, 1.3 was a standard, was the current standard for, for years and years and years. I had probably say about four to five years. Uh, HDMI 1.4 then came out. And there are four features of HDMI 1.4 uh, that separate it from, from previous standards. Um, and HDMI.org does not want you to market anything as a manufacturer as HDMI 1.4. If you are a uh, uh, certified uh, vendor for HDMI.org, if you're a licensed vendor as Key Digital is, you have to uh, abide by their rules and they do not want you to market anything as 1.4. You can no longer throw an umbrella statement over any product saying 1.4 or even previous standards 1.3, etc. Instead, they want you, and uh, and you'll you'll see why our marketing is 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 done this way to identify the force the standards that you support of HDMI 1.4, making it more of an educational approach. One of the standards of 1.4 is Ethernet channel. Uh, if you have an HDMI connected device, such as a Blu-ray player that is connected to uh, to uh, internet. Uh, and you'd like to share that internet connection with your display, you can do so if, if both the source and the display support HDMI 1.4 uh, Ethernet channel uh, over HDMI, and, um, and if your cable in between has the Ethernet channel support. Audio return channel is, uh, is very, if you imagine that Ethernet connectivity being shared between the display and the source, and your display is now able to stream content from a uh, video um, server uh, video content uh, streaming device or uh, service such as YouTube and maybe that uh, content has 5.1 audio um, how does it come how, how are you able to take advantage of that 5.1 signal is with the audio return channel whereas instead of being limited by the uh, capability of the display and we all know in the industry that audio tends to get uh, more and more uh, <laughs> the performance is just not there as it used to be because of course the panels are becoming very very thin where could you put such a uh, high performance speaker in a display that is only two inches three inches deep it's hard to find that room the audio return channel allows you to send that audio that originates in the display um, as the display is the source in this case and return it to say an AV receiver uh, for for uh, the user to listen to 5.1 audio or a high definition audio format. 3D over HDMI, uh, hands down the most popular of the uh, four uh, standards, uh, the four features of HDMI 1.4, uh, 3D uh, capable TVs and Blu-ray players, um, <clears throat> shipping in the US and abroad. Um, they have now uh, identified the, the, the standards of 3D, the, the various types of 3D. We do have an interesting article on the Knowledge Center currently uh, describing each of those uh, uh, 3D content types uh, that you should uh, read. And, um, <clears throat> and that is essentially, that was the catalyst to really uh, promoting HDMI 1.4. We'll see how, how that continues to develop in our industry. And of course, as we've mentioned a few times, 4K by 2K resolution. 4K by 2K, uh, 4000 by 2000 is a resolution, just as 1080p is a resolution, uh, 1920 by 1080, where 1080p is commonly at 60 frames per second. Um, 4K by 2K is always at 24 frames per second. So it's approximately uh, doubled, triple uh, the uh, resolution of a 1080p signal, uh, yet it's at less frames per second, kind of bringing it back down to earth and, and approximately the same bandwidth of a 1080p 60 signal. Excuse me, four times the resolution of 1080p. Uh, my math not being too good here, so I apologize for that. But um, it, certainly this is uh, where your video uh, could go from 1080p. How do you get higher than 1080p? You need a display and a source that uh, support 4K by 2K. And it, when you find that, you rest assured that key digital HDMI cables um, and many of our hardware, HDMI hardware, fully support 3D, 4K by 2K, Ethernet channel, and audio return channel. Okay, so we talk about the uh, features and support of an HDMI cable, um, but really we want you to master uh, the essential one-to-one -one scenario. And you're going to be confronted uh, with, uh, more commonly than not, with opportunities to either use an HDMI cable, 
traditional cabling or an HDMI ballon. And um, certainly your preferences will be formed and, uh, and certainly uh, we have some guidelines here but generally speaking it, it is a relative decision. Um, however, we have here at some guidelines of when to use HDMI cables um, in a one-to-one -one application. Um, rack interconnects are ideal applications for a traditional HDMI cabling. Uh, short runs, 75 feet or less, uh, is, is where QDigital makes them to right now. Um, and there is somewhat of a threshold. Uh, at a certain length, um, the, it will become more cost effective actually to use an HDMI ballon versus an HDMI cable. Uh, certainly pricing is something that uh, uh, will fluctuate, so always uh, please contact your key digital rep or uh, channel of, uh, of obtaining our products to discuss pricing. But at a certain threshold, you'll see that it's, it's actually more cost effective to uh, purchase one of our cost effective HDMI pairs that we'll introduce you to. HDMI ballon pairs uh, versus buying a long length HDMI cable. So some of those longer lengths may be uh, uh, just a requirement that you need a cable, not a ballon, or certainly, like I said, uh, more of a preference why to use a cable versus the ballon. <clears throat> um, if you need HDMI.org features, we, we talked about uh, the current standards of HDMI 1.4. Um, a cable, uh, key digital cables, um, uh, all they all whether it be a foot and a half or 75 feet again support 3d they all support 4k by 2k resolution they'll all support the ethernet on hdmi and they all support audio return channel whereas a ballon as of uh, january 1st 2012 currently you get the support of 3d you get the support of 4k by 2k resolution but uh, ethernet over that ballon or audio return over that ballon is not something that key digital uh, currently supports on any of our HDMI ballon parts. Very good. So now you can see actually that there are some advantages to sticking with traditional cabling, HDMI cabling for example, versus using a ballon currently. Um, keep in mind that Key Digital, of course does have products in development that will uh, be able to fulfill all four of the features of HDMI 1.4 standard. Um, now that we see though that uh, at the current state what is available via traditional cabling, what is available via balance. Let's focus in on the balance that Key Digital offers. We're going to look at all of our uh, balance here, starting with analog and then going into digital. What is a balance? Well, it stands for balanced, unbalanced. You may hear it uh, be pronounced as balance. It's very common. Uh, or a number of things, really. We've heard it all here at uh, Key Digital Technical Support. Um, and, and really what it, all that it means though, no matter how you pronounce it, is that you're using a category cabling uh, in the middle uh, between your point A and your point B in your one-to-one -one setup. Uh, you're using that category cabling with the ballon uh, on each end, a transmitter and a receiver completes that extension. Um, you see that there are some advantages still of using uh, traditional cabling versus balance, but I would say that uh, the odds are you're looking at balance in more often than not these days. Um, and, and of course, maybe I have a biased opinion being that I work for a company like Key Digital, uh, where we do have HDMI cables, as you know, and of course, a, a wide variety of balance. But why is it so popular? Category cabling, very inexpensive, okay? Um, starting at Cat5, sold by the thousand foot spool for, well, you guys know the prices, okay? Just got to be careful, make sure you don't get the stuff that's too cheap. Might not even be copper. <laughs> um, category cabling is easy to install. It's very flexible. Very, very flexible. And uh, the ease of installation as well as the price point actually... Uh, maybe you get sacrificed a little bit as you go up to more robust cabling from Cat5 to Cat5e, Cat6, and even Cat6 shielded, which we will discuss. But uh, with the, uh, especially with active balance uh, and the, really the advancements in the silicone chips that are used um, to provide, uh, to, inside these balance, really provides long lengths with excellent, excellent picture qualities. Oh, with a, a category cable in the middle. You, uh, as an installer, may have already, uh, may have been the one to install and to rough in the wiring in, in your commercial or your residential project. Uh, if not, 
it might already be there. Odds are it, uh, it, it is absolutely already there. It, it's usually already behind the walls or uh, easily ran in your applications. So let's uh, talk about the twisted pair. Uh, how does the twisted pair work? Well, the twisted pair, um, it's very simple actually. And you can see a diagram here uh, describing how the twisted pair works and, and, and therefore the ballon as well. And what's most importantly described here uh, and, and, and made evident here is how the ballon can deliver signal without noise. It delivers signal without noise because the signal is sent differentially. One of the wires in the twisted pair carries positive signal while the other is a negative or an inverted signal. Mathematically, in the receiver end, these signals are subtracted from each other. And since they're inverted to begin with, the subtraction process results in the output signal with double the amplitude. And you can see, as it relates to noise, that means there's going to be zero noise whatsoever. And of course, it is uh, much more elaborate than that. But that's actually how just that simple twisted pair cabling works and, and, and what the balance takes advantage of to, to deliver video audio control over category cabling. So let's uh, look a little bit more. Like we said, category cabling, easy to use, but it comes with a cost. What do we mean by that? Picture quality over distance. Um, with just using category cabling in the middle, it's essentially it's no different than using a long run VGA cable or a long run component video, since we're talking about analog here. Similarly, if you have passive balance, transmitter and receiver on each end, you, you really have no active correction. Therefore, your distant your performance over distance table essentially is a gradual slope effect, just like it would be if you were using a traditional VGA or component video cable. In the passive video uh, balance, meaning there's no power required, Key Digital offers four different component video balance. Component video, very popular, very popular. We already talked about earlier in this presentation when is component video utilized? Uh, for example, the sports bars, etc. We have four different SKUs uh, that can deliver component video with stereo audio, component video with analog audio, a single analog on a mono. That's our KD-CAT RCA AA. Whereas the component video with stereo analog audio, that's a five RCA balance. KD-CAT RCA SA. You could probably figure out the nomenclature by now. Down third from the top, KD-CAT RCA DA component video with the PCM coaxial digital audio port. And finally, for the applications where maybe you don't need audio, we're able to offer you a Phoenix connector for IR signals, IR control signals. That is our KD-CAT. RCA IR. So you can see that uh, based on the previous performance chart, you see there's actually no correction. Why do you use it? Well, again, just for the same benefits of using CAT cabling, why you would use a balance on each end. And you can see, uh, go to your local key digital channel, a uh, channel of obtaining key digital products, and you'll see that having one of these balance on each end, which by the way, they're all sold as a pair here, as you can see very inexpensive, can meet a very low price point for you. So what kind of performance are we looking at here? Well, we have two columns, good and best. And really, good and best is a relative statement, of course. It depends on you. It depends on your client. It depends on your application. Is this an application where perhaps the client is going to walk up to the display and put their nose on the panel and they're going to uh, really be looking at every single line of resolution, well then you want to stick with the best quality 
uh, guidelines here that we that we've provided. Um, or you may want to bypass a passive balance altogether in all honesty and go to an active analog video balance, which we will discuss in just a few slides here. But you can see it really varies by the bandwidth of the signal you're providing. For example, for component video, 1080i is, is pretty much the, uh, as we discussed earlier, the, the highest resolution possible or, or that's uh, provided over component, let's say. Where these passive video bounds are able to extend component video signals up to 600 feet at a good picture quality, 300 feet at the best picture quality. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, without seeing this firsthand, what does it mean, good and best? Again, it's all relative, but um, for example, if the application is going to be viewing video, lots of motion and that sort of thing, uh, a movie, for example, good quality is actually acceptable. When there's a lot of movement, you don't see any ghosting. However, if your application is uh, showing uh, maybe they're always they're in a sports bar and they're always going to have the ticker along the bottom of the screen for ESPN or the news networks. Any application, in fact, where you may have hard lines such as uh, PowerPoint presentations, spreadsheets, etc. Hard lines, you're able to visibly notice ghosting. Ghosting is the separation of your video signals component video being split into three different fields. Category cabling is actually, uh, common category cabling is actually twisted, uh, four twisted pairs, twisted at different tightnesses for each pair. And <clears throat> that results without any active correction or equalization that, uh, that of course a passive balance cannot offer. That different tightness for each pair can actually result as you go further and further and further in your distance in separation of your image. The, 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 the sync of the image, you might have some red ghosting if you're looking at some hard lines, a red line or a blue line slightly out of phase from the sync of the image. And that's just the nature of a passive video balance. So again, we have active balance if that's something you'd like to avoid or you, you stay within these guidelines here fully understanding uh, exactly what a passive video balance does, essentially just acting as a means of uh, using the, the twisted pair media in the middle to extend from point A to point B and the transmitter and receiver just converting that back over to video and audio, then you'll be in good shape. The features of these, <clears throat> well, it can work with Cat5, it can work with Cat5 or Cat6. It does not have to be shielded. It can work with unshielded or shielded cable. It has a shielded RJ45 connector, so you can see it here in the photos where you have the female RJ45 on the back of each of these units is actually metal. It's a metal RJ45 connector. Additionally, some of these models, you can see not all of them, feature um, dip switches, a red block of dip switches there, and you can't really see it in these photos, but also some of these uh, of this series of products, passive analog video balance, also features a grounding screw. When do you need to use these dip switches or the grounding screw? Well, <clears throat> those are uh, very handy in applications where maybe you should have used shielded cabling. So when do you use shielded cabling? Because first and foremost, this is the best way to go. Any application where you may have grounding issues, perhaps caused by your source equipment and your display equipment being powered by um, electricity from say two different electrical panels. Maybe you're going from one building to the, to the next, the, the, the main residence to the guest house or the main building of the church to a, uh, to a, uh, a separate building, a smaller building. Um, usually that's very, you're, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to have grounding uh, differences when you extend video from uh, from point A to point B there and how it's going to manifest itself on your screen is what's called a humbar and a humbar is a uh, translucent rolling bar of color usually uh, usually like say a, a, 
a light or a translucent blue color is common. Um, and it's going to be a horizontal bar that rolls from bottom to top. Many of you are familiar with it. It's very similar. Uh, it's not unlike a, uh, an audio hum problem where that is also due to grounding, where you, have, you can hear a hum from the audio due to grounding issues from point A to point B. Um, that, when you do that, the best thing, uh, when you fear, fear that you may have an application that has a scenario like that, and you're setting up yourself up for that, the best thing to do is use shielded twisted pair cabling. And anytime you use shielded twisted pair, STP, you must use shielded RJ45 connectors as well. Shielded RJ45 connectors are metal RJ45s where you can take the drain wire, the metal drain wire from that shielded cat cable and you solder it to the base of that RJ45 on both sides. And what that does is it extends ground from point A to point B and completes the shield. Uh, many installers in the past have just taken that drain wire and wrapped it around their cable a few times so it doesn't poke out. And that's a no-no. And the reason why is because if you think about it, if you don't, if you're just wrapping that drain wire and it's just hanging, not properly soldered to the uh, to a metal RJ45 base, you're doing nothing more than actually creating an antenna for interference to uh, to jump on and to really uh, significantly negatively impact your video extension. So if you don't have that shielded twisted pair, back to a few minutes ago, uh, the, the, the start of this was, why do we have the dip switches and the grounding screw? Well, first of all, if you do have shielded twisted pair, the dip switches are there to create a metal-to-metal -metal contact inside, internally in this ballon. That metal-to-metal -metal contact is uh, included in the documentation for the project, uh, product there, where you'll see STP position, and that uh, fully extends that ground from point A to point B. The grounding screw is there if you don't have shielded cable, but perhaps you have an extra pair of wire there or an extra cat cable, as many runs do. You can use that to connect to ground on both ends. For example, from a grounding screw in your equipment rack, connect a, a pair of wire uh, or a nice, uh, uh, nice gauge wire from that grounding screw, wrap it around uh, on the rack, wrap it around the grounding screw on the ballon and do the same thing on the other side from the receive ballon to a point of ground uh, at the display. Um, that is one step closer. And finally, if you have an extra wire uh, in between those two ballons, so internally, where we've already made the connections externally, you make another connection internally as well, and that's just uh, all the better. So again, we ask, why would you use these balance without any active equalization? Uh, cost effectiveness, certainly, but um, it's easy to use, more cost effective than coax category cabling is. These are very, very small. The dimensions are listed in the uh, product literature and on the product page on keydigital.com. And furthermore, some applications you may just not even have the power available to plug in on both ends. Well, here you know with the key digital passive analog balance, no power is, is required. So not only do we have passive analog video balance for component video, but we have also for your other common <coughs> analog video formats. We have KD-CAT VGA, which is, as the name implies, a VGA ballon pair, as you can see, and KD-CAT CVX, composite video plus stereo audio. Let's take a look at the performance of these ballons. It's very important to, uh, to take note that VGA being that it is a video signal, again, split five ways, as we mentioned earlier in this training. Red, green, blue, three different colors, horizontal and vertical sync. It is your ghosting limitations arrive much sooner than with component video. So you can see here at your various computer resolutions what Key Digital recommends as a good distance and what Key Digital recommends as a best distance. 
meaning you stick below this distance at this resolution, you're going to get very good picture quality. And also KD-CAT CVX. Now, you may have seen the, these sorts of distances here with, in regards to the uh, audio offered by the previous component balance we were looking at. 1,000 feet best quality, 2,000 feet good quality. Why is that? Because 480i video, which is of course the only resolution that's possible over a composite video connection, is very low bandwidth information. In fact, it carries the same bandwidth approximately as an analog audio signal, as you can see. So because that bandwidth is right around the same for a 480i signal, and because it's only on a single video uh, uh, channel, you see that best quality, 1,000 feet, good quality, 2,000 feet. And many of you have run um, CCTV cameras this kind of distance for your security systems uh, without really seeing any negatives to that. Just like on the previous balance, with the passive Fat Cat series, VGA and composite video plus analog audio balance, you have, it, it'll work with either a single Cat5, Cat5e, or Cat6. It features a shielded RJ45 connection, and some of them will contain uh, dip switches or grounding screws. So now that you understand a passive video balance and what it can and cannot deliver, let's take a look at active video balance. Active video balance, of course, will require power on both ends, on the transmit side and the receive side. They both need to be powered up. And what they're able to provide you, as you see here, the typical CAT5 performance, just CAT cabling without any active equalization, gain correction, anything like that. Now, an active balance is able to increase performance with key digital correction with the support of silicone chip correction, as we discussed here, the evolvement of that and the advancement of silicone chips for balance has really come a long way. If you think back maybe uh, five, six, even seven years ago, your balance were pretty much passive balance. You maybe had four RCAs because there's four twisted pairs, but no correction or anything like that. Um, we're able to offer correction which results in a system performance up to 1,000 feet, up to 1,000 feet, and that's best picture quality. Now, of course, that is going to vary slightly based on your uh, resolution and your environmental factors, but say, for example, component video 720p or 1080i up to 1,000 feet is no problem. VGA, you may uh, reach that performance uh, maximum a little sooner, which we will discuss with our KD CAT CVA and KD CVA RX balance. Because they're powered, they're able to be extremely versatile. You do see on here a VGA connection on each balance. <clears throat> However, the KD CAT CVA and KD CVA RX, the CVA series, supports both VGA and component video. What goes in is what goes out. In the box, you will see an included VGA to three wire breakout cable. So if you need to use it for component video, you use that on both ends. Again, what goes in, what goes out, meaning you cannot go in VGA and expect to connect to your display's component video connection and, and, and expect to have a picture. That just wouldn't work because you're missing your sync. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, KD CAT CVA is sold as a pair. KD CVA RX, as noted, is sold independently. Why? Because it is able to marry in with our component or VGA distribution amplifier, CAT DA 4TX, and also our component or VGA matrix switcher, KD MSW CAT 8x8. We'll discuss those later on in this presentation, especially the DA, and then the matrix will be in level two. On the KD CAT CVA, you have your transmitter actually has a USB port there. You may be wondering what is that for? Is Key Digital able to extend USB signals? The answer is no. The USB is there for power only. In the case that you are using it for VGA applications, it's very handy to just plug it into the USB, an open USB port on your computer and it will draw us power like that. 
If you're not using it for a VGA application, you don't have a USB power supply right beside you there. Not to worry. Also in the box is a USB uh, dongle that marries in with the included wall warp power supply. So again, as these are sold as pairs, you uh, in the box includes all necessary accessories, uh, including power supplies, breakout cables, uh, to make these balance work in either case. Your audio is on a 3.5 millimeter club, uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, port. Uh, you have male connection on the transmit side, a female 3.5 millimeter on the receive side. Now there is no 3.5 to left right RCA adapter uh, cable included in this packaging. So that will be something that perhaps depending on your application you may have to purchase additionally. The KDCVARX is just the receive bound. Includes the power supply, includes any uh, uh, accessories that might be required um, and again sold independently to Marion with the distribution amplifier or the matrix switcher. Now these balance again extremely versatile from standard def to high def even having the bandwidth to support 1080p um, even having the bandwidth to support even slightly higher than 1080p for example the VGA uh, VESA resolution 1920 by 1200. There are uh, manual adjustments on this. So when we talk about that key digital correction, the silicone chips, uh, of course there's a number of things that they're doing actively uh, automatically, but additionally there are some manual adjustments uh, that each installer can use on receive balance to find the optimum picture quality after a second or two with a uh, flathead screwdriver at the display. And we'll discuss those settings later in this presentation. So in addition to the automatic equalization and correction that takes place with Key Digital. There's also some fine tuning adjustments so that you can really get that picture quality up to a thousand feet. Now as we were discussing the difference between component video and VGA, again uh, your VGA content for example is going to commonly be much uh, more hard lines in that content versus component video where it's maybe just uh, motion and, and movies and, and that sort of thing. Um, now because of that, again, you do uh, run into the distance performance limitation uh, that much sooner with VGA because again, that video signal is split five ways, RGB, HV, horizontal and vertical sync. Now what can you do about that? Well, um, many balance in the marketplace uh, may feature or uh, skew compensation. Skew compensation, skew is actually the term that refers to this separation of your image and compensation balance are available in the marketplace uh, that essentially will be able to manually set that back, make sure your red, your green, your blue, and your sync is all in line together. Um, the video gain and equalization screws on these balance actually serve a huge benefit to you where other uh, competitors balance in the marketplace you may have to take that step up to that skew compensation balance, which many of you are probably very familiar with, can be quite pricey. Having that cable EQ and video gain adjustment is actually uh, lends us to say requiring a skew free cabling or skew compensation unit, an external skew compensation unit, at approximately 700 feet at a, uh, at a 1024 by 768 resolution versus a, a lot of other manufacturers approach that at about 350 feet. So you get essentially twice the distance because of this manual adjustment that is possible. Um, you heard me mention skew-free cabling. It is cabling that is twisted in a way that is uh, to prevent the, um, phase, uh, the phase shifting that happens over long runs and Key Digital actually makes a fantastic cable that we will also uh, highlight later in this presentation our KD-CAT6 STP-1X. It's a shielded CAT6 cable that is can also be used uh, as a means of ensuring that you will not have any skew problems if you're extending VGA signals long distances. So now we're going to step into HDMI. 
all of Key Digital's HDMI balance are active. Key Digital has balance that require shielded Cat6 cable and balance that do not require shielded Cat6 cable. The, of the balance that do not require shielded Cat6, that's what we're going to discuss here. They require two Cat cables, so dual Cat5 or Cat6 balance of our Fat Cat series. HDMI balance where you take the Cat5 performance in HDMI there is a raw error rate that significantly uh, decreases the distance limit uh, performance ability versus analog video one too many ones or zeros come up missing and you may have no signal whatsoever well you can see here the key digitals correction is able to come in and uh, and ensure that your video performance meets for these dual cat balance 150 feet for 1080p at 60 frames per second or essentially double that distance about 270 feet for 1080i signals that's about half the bandwidth of the 1080p signal so key digital is able to give you about twice the distance of that of a 1080p uh, extension where a lot of other balance in the marketplace really may have a limit at 150 or maybe even closer to 100 feet from what I've heard. Uh, Key Digital is uh, definitely up there. It, it, I guess we're the best. I, I can say it here. <laughs> you, you can trust us that uh, we're doing everything we can to give you balance that work very well, um, perfectly at distances 100 plus feet where uh, from what I've heard a lot of manufacturers just to go back into modesty mode here uh, a lot of manufacturers are having a hard time uh, providing a, a reliable balance at 100 feet plus now what do we have here as you see the vertical of your uh, HDMI video performance right at that 150 foot mark or 270 foot mark for 1080i um, is a cliff is a cliff uh, we put that in there to let you all know that these are maximum distances that we discuss here. And especially in the digital world where we saw with the analog world that you have a slope effect of performance and you can continue just pushing, pushing, pushing and maybe expect to just have a bit of a softer image for example. Well, with HDMI, it is very much a cliff effect. And <clears throat> once you go into the realm of the uh, error, as you, as you can see here, uh, fail rate, uh, fail, failure here, the area of failure, you're essentially not going to have any picture whatsoever with HDMI. You can't just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. It's not a slope effect like it is in the world of analog. And so <clears throat> this correction that Key Digital offers is, is, is very important because essentially, um, we are able to provide those distances 100 to 150 feet plus because we are able to ensure those ones, those zeros do not drop into that error failure uh, space of this table here. And so that distance again, 150 feet, 1080p uh, approximately, that's a maximum distance again, 270 feet, 1080i. Uh, now 1080i carries a similar bandwidth as 720p or even 1080p at 24 frames per second. So really it's not specific to resolution, it's specific to the bandwidth that each resolution requires. So what are the dual cat balance that we're speaking of here and that can offer this performance is KD-CatHDX. KD-CatHDX is our dual cat 5 balance pair. It works with shielded cable, it works with unshielded cable. Again, just keep in mind, severe electrical environments or grounding issues could result in failure. Um, but it does work with unshielded cabling in the case of an application where you're not going to run any, any of those sorts of hurdles. Our KD CAT HDX is not only a balance extending HDMI uh, video and audio signals, but also extending uh, IR or unidirectional RS-232 control signals. As you can see here, there is a 3.5 millimeter plug on each side, and that is used for IR with your tip uh, being your IR signal uh, of a mono 3.5 millimeter plug, or we say unidirectional RS-232 because it only supports a mono plug, meaning 
uh, if whether you want the RS-232 transmit line or receive line, it's got to be on that tip of your 3.5 millimeter plug. Now these balance are fantastic. Again, they're going to require power on both ends, but uh, I can't tell you how many times that we've heard here at Key Digital that uh, installers have gone around and around and around from one manufacturer to the next and going through 5, 10, even 20 different manufacturers of balance only to have them say work that day but fail that night or some cases fail a week later or a month later. Um, yet this is the balance that works. This is a balance that absolutely works. It's very solid, very reliable, and there's no curveballs thrown at you by this. And what do I mean by that? Well, these balances act as a transparency uh, from point A to point B in the one-to-one -one connection or in any HDMI extension, just as an HDMI cable would. What does that mean? Well, if the display has, a, uh, has an EDIN file that says it supports 1080p uh, but not 3D, and your source is a Blu-ray player, um, it's going to receive that handshake from the display uh, as though it was a short run HDMI cable interconnecting the two. And that's actually very important and, it, it, and actually there are a lot of products in the marketplace because we've seen them here in our lab that do not do that and they may manipulate the handshake or uh, they may even strip HDCP and these sorts of things that uh, you know really are not how a good balance should behave. Where with this balance, it is a transparency from point A to point B. Um, you will see here, for example, an installation tip here. It has support for 12-bit deep color, but only at 1080i. Uh, that is a not, uh, it does not support 12-bit deep color at 1080p. So therefore, because this is a transparency, and maybe you have a projector or a, a display that does support 12-bit deep color at 1080p and a source that can output that, you're going to have to go into your source and tell it to uh, disable 12-bit deep color at 1080p. Um, doing that, you're going to be in, in great shape. And really, that's, uh, there are a number of sources, of course, in displays that support that. It's, uh, it's not every source and every display that this unit is installed in but certainly worth mentioning here on this video. So uh, again, you have your pens handy there, make sure you jot that down. So <clears throat> where we talked about earlier, cabling, being able to support the four features of HDMI 1.4, 3D, 4K by 2K resolution, Ethernet over HDMI, and audio return channel, this balance does not. It currently supports 3D, no problem. 3D, again, as long as your display is able to support 3D, that handshake's gonna go through telling the source, hey, you got the green light, go ahead and output that 3D signal. And also 4K by 2K resolutions, uh, which is a very high resolution, and uh, essentially, though, turns out to be approximately the same bandwidth as a 1080p resolution, because uh, it is a very high uh, amount of, lines of resolution, both vertically and horizontal, uh, but at a lower frame rate, 24 frames per second versus 60, where 1080p is at. So this is a very good balance. This is one of our top sellers, and definitely um, a balance that has, over time since its initial release, in previous incarnations even, uh, come down in pricing as well, where again, go check out your, your, uh, your Key Digital channel and ask them for the pricing on the KD Cat HDX. You're going to be very surprised. It's a very good price point, sold as a pair, where you don't have to make sure you bought one end and you have the other end that matches up with it. It makes it easy. One box, one skew equals both ends. Now, as we go beyond the dual cat balance. Key Digital offers single cat balance, and that cat cabling requires shielded cat six. These balance they require shielded cat six. Why do this single cat balance require shielded cat six at Key Digital? Well, there's a chance, of course, it may work. We'll never tell you that. There's a, we specify on the website. We'll tell you until we're blue in the shape uh, in the face that. Um, <clears throat> It must be shielded cat six because 
In the case of grounding issues, in the, in the case of electrical interference with a, a digital balance, unless it's super severe, you're not really going to run into any problems. You typically do not have humbars on an HDMI extension as you may in an analog video extension. However, that uh, interference is able to be very well um, uh, defeated with a dual cat bound. We're able to defeat it. That noise has, after all, two pairs of wires that it's spread across, essentially. Where with the single cat bound, there's really nowhere for that noise to go other than to interrupt your video extension, resulting possibly in flickering or perhaps even total video loss. Now, <clears throat> for our single cat balance, we have KDBBTX and KDBBRX. These are what we call smart balance because they're not only HDMI, they're, they're also IR and RS-232, and we're talking full bi-directional here, where it's not unidirectional as it was in the case of the KD CAT HDX. Fully bi-directional IR and RS-232, in fact, they're simultaneously uh, uh, active and bi-directional. Additionally, you have an, a, a second Phoenix connector for uh, analog audio, balanced or unbalanced audio, and PCM digital audio as well. Now, as we take a closer look at these balance, here's a uh, enlarged view. HDMI or DVI, or of course even DisplayPort using the appropriate adapter dongle on the HDMI connection, supporting video and audio. You have two external audio ports, the Phoenix connector for left and right analog, balanced or unbalanced, and the RCA for PCM digital coaxial. Now, these external audio ports are only available to you in the case that your extension does not require HDCP, high definition copyright protection. Um, why is that? Well, it's a single cap ballon, and we must choose, are we allotting a certain space to either HDCP signals or to these external audio signals. So if you're extending a Blu-ray player, a cable box, Apple TV, chances are that is an HDCP device, in which case these external audio ports are not going to be made available to you. How do you choose between HDCP or the external audio? Um, actually, the dip switch there, that you see there's three dip switches right in the middle on a production unit. You'll see uh, the, uh, the, the text either DDC is another terminology for HDCP and uh, HDMI data, or audio. You, by simply toggling between the two, you're able to decide. Now, you also have the control, again, a Phoenix connector, IR and RS-232. Um, that Phoenix connector is a five-pin connection. It's a five-pin connection that enables you to carry IR signal, IR ground, RS-232 transmit signal, RS-232 receive signal, and RS-232 ground. So those are your five pins. Now, again, with your notes handy here, it is uh, not uncommon that we receive calls at Key Digital that uh, an installer is trying to connect an IR receiver to, say, the BBRX, which is at the display zone, <coughs> and that IR signal is not going through. Well, again, IR, we have two pins and two pins only, signal and ground. An IR receiver is, uh, is a three-wire, typically a three-wire connection, signal, ground, and power. These bounds do not carry the power for the, key, uh, for the IR signal, okay? So, uh, therefore, what do you do? Typically, you use an IR connection block, Key Digital, in fact, uh, here at Key Digital, we manufacture them. KD IR Kit 300 is the model number. Um, <clears throat> or, as some people may uh, even uh, have used in the field, uh, picking up a generic power supply. I believe usually your IR receivers are around 12 volts or maybe it's 5 volt power supply and, uh, and connecting your power there locally. But again, the, this balance uh, 
It does not carry IR power. Those dip switches there, again, allowing your handshaking to determine is it an HDCP system or an analog system. Uh, shielded CAT6 cable, remember, very important. The infrastructure for digital extensions is is the most important thing to key digital. Why? Because we already have the EDID and the HDCP cover. If you have the proper infrastructure between point A and point B, it's going to work every time. It's going to eliminate that plug and pray mentality that many people have become uh, to uh, associate key digital with. This balance, again, just like had HDX, can extend 1080p signals 150 feet or even 1080i 300 feet because you're using a shielded CAT6, it's uh, a bigger bandwidth, it's more robust cable, uh, we're able to extend that cliff uh, out a little bit more by using that cable to give you 300 feet for 1080i, 720p, 1080p at 24 frames per second or your comparable computer resolutions. Now here, we're going to look at another shielded CAT6 ballon that falls under the HD Base T category. HD Base T is a newer technology that is actually uh, implemented by many AV manufacturers in the uh, consumer electronics side as well as the uh, custom installation side, in fact. HD Base T is another method of, uh, of the extension of fully uncompressed 1080p video and audio signals and supports even your uh, HDMI standards. Now, of course, that is subject to change, so uh, make sure you visit the appropriate websites for HDBase-T and HDMI.org to clarify that. Now, HDBase-T is becoming very popular uh, because it is able to offer you <coughs> 1080p, full 1080p at 300 feet with key digital balance. 300 feet, where that is twice the distance 1080p was able to be extended with our previous balance, the BBTX, BBRX on a, on a single shielded CAT6 or the CAT HDX on dual CAT cable. Um, HD base T is based on the platform what they call 5-play. Uh, again, fully uncompressed video and audio. IR and RS-232 control signals, Ethernet connectivity, and even power can be extended over a single CAT6 shielded with HDBST technology. Um, these balance do not extend the power signals because these are balance that utilize it where we're not powering up a display here, for example. Um, now, the HDBST spec is approximately 300 feet up to 300 meters, certainly using proper shielded CAT6 cabling, nice robust cabling again, it's gonna get you those distances. And that is something that every manufacturer is able to deliver, um, or every manufacturer HD base T part is specified at, let's say, um, yet only Key Digital was able to fully harness HD base T technology and our engineers were able to take it to the next level because, as you know, just because the computer has Intel inside doesn't mean they're all the same, does it? And so Key Digital, where you see here the uh, performance, 300 feet for 1080p, you also have a possibility of 500 feet at 1080i. Now, 300 feet or 100 meters is the spec for HD based T technology for all resolutions. Key Digital has a special SKU that is the KD dash cat HD 500 FW that has a firmware load that really unleashes this power to go up to 500 feet for a bandwidth of 1080i, 720p, 1080p 24, but not 1080p, not 1920 by 1200, not 4k by 2k. Okay, so the 500 FW version delivers 500 feet but at your lower bandwidth resolutions, or your half bandwidth res resolutions, let's call it, uh, not at the full bandwidth resolution. Now, when we talk about this cliff, um, actually, it's very important to mention that 
you will know. Uh, how do you know when you're at this cliff? Maybe you're not a full 300 feet. Maybe you're at 280. Maybe you're at 290. Um, how do you know when you're at this cliff? Well, if you see digital sparkle or salt and pepper, as it's commonly referred to, on your display, then typically that means that your cabling, uh, that your uh, extension is at that cliff. Your toes, in fact, are hanging 10 off of that cliff. Um, flickering, flickering is a telltale sign that you're hanging 10 off that cliff as well. Um, or even just a total uh, snowy image uh, where most displays will typically not give you anything whatsoever. Some displays, they all, dis they all uh, behave differently, manufacturer to manufacturer, may still give you like a snowy image, but you might not see anything there uh, of the content that you should be viewing. And that typically means you're at the cliff. We'll talk about troubleshooting that later in this presentation. So for the KD CAT HD 500 and the CAT HD 500 FW, um, full, support, full support for 3D, these balance, uh, again, sticking with the theory that, uh, or with the, the proof that not all balance are created equal just because they use HD based T technology, there are some really cool features here that Key Digital offers that other HD based T balance do not because we have our engineers on site here able to really maximize these things. So as we take a closer look, we'll show you. Um, again, they do require shielded CAT6 cable. We have here in orange your video and audio connections. Um, on your transmit side, you have your HDMI input. It comes from your source or matrix switcher or scaler or anything of those, uh, any kind of device of that nature. But you also see a pass-through. Because these bounds are able to give you essentially up to 500 feet, wouldn't you like to know that your source is outputting video? That is made possible with the HDMI pass-through on the transmit side. Additionally, it's perfect for connecting to a local monitor. It's also perfect for connecting in your rack to your AV receivers while the receive end connects to your display on the wall. Because it does, again, fully uh, support your uncompressed uh, audio formats as well as up to 1080p and 4K by 2K resolutions. Another feature that Key Digital uh, supports here that nobody else, for my money, uh, that I've seen so far, has, has put on their product, HD based T product, is in green here where you have <coughs> the heated control rotary where this transmitter is able to negotiate a handshake whether it is the handshake that's directly from a direct copy of the uh, uh, display device that's connected to the receive panel or actually nine other heated files that are actually the creation of key digital and that are stored internally in the library inside this transmit balance because if you have say for example an AV receiver connected through the pass-through and a display on the wall or a uh, projector uh, at the end of the receive run chances are you're going to need some handshake negotiation to make sure that this works so in addition to those key benefits where we have the extended range, we have the pass-through, we have the edit control, you can see in blue we highlight all of our control ports, RS-232 and IR, in fact bi-directional IR, uh, two ports, two 3.5 millimeter ports. You have the Ethernet pass-through uh, supporting up to 100 base T. This is fantastic. Why? Because your displays nowadays are uh, more and more uh, supporting some smart features allowing them to stream content natively uh, um, versus pulling it from the cable box, pulling it from a, a, an external source device. Um, or for many commercial applications that these products are installed with, you may even have a digital signage player located at each display that's going to need to be on that network. And that is all possible with just a single Cat6 shielded cable in between a KD CAT HD 500 transmit and a KD CAT HD 500 receive. So now that we see here the importance of following the rules of HDMI, yet know the upside of full 1080p uh, picture quality, 
but really just the upside of HDMI and the fact that it is a digital signal. If you play by those rules, it's not going to look like you have a 300-foot extension in the middle as it would in the analog world. Instead, it looks perfect as though it is, again, a short-run, six-foot direct connect cable between point A and point B. And so now that we know uh, some of these guidelines, let's look at troubleshooting in case you perhaps uh, run into any hurdles on your installations. One, your CAT cable length is a basic limitation. Um, <clears throat> what we specify at P Digital is the maximum distance. Uh, again, as we mentioned here many times, um, 1080p is twice the bandwidth as, say, a 1080i. 1080p24 or even a 720p image. <clears throat> Therefore, you essentially get half the distance in HDMI products. Uh, if you're mirroring that distance limitation, you will begin to see that salt or pepper on the screen or some of those other symptoms we discussed. Uh, two, in an active video bound, your transmit and your receive are specific. Key Digital is usually very good or is very good with all of our balance having a nice little logo on it that says TX and RX. Um, so there's no confusion. And even so much as our HDMI uh, ports, for example, on, on the transmit side bound is labeled an HDMI input, on the receive bound is labeled an HDMI output. Similarly, similarly with your RJ45 ports, from a transmitter is RJ45 out, from a receiver is RJ45 in. So you follow those. In the passive video balance case, actually, uh, bounds are not specific. You do not have to have a transmitter on this side or a receiver on that side. They can be interchanged. Um, <clears throat> key Digital, all of Key Digital's HDMI bounds, as we've discussed, require power. There are manufacturers out there that do not. Maybe on both ends, maybe just on one end it's going to say that you need power or, or you don't need power. Why does Key Digital do it on both ends? it's going to increase your reliability. A lot of these products that are out there uh, without requiring power on both ends claim that they will be powered by the five volt signal or five volt power that is actually part of an HDMI signal. It's possible, however, there are sources out there, there are displays out there as well that provide that, you know, it's a little shady as far as it is, is it, really going to provide enough juice to power the balance? Is it really a full 5 volt signal? So that's why Key Digital uh, puts power supplies on both ends of our balance. Um, DVI is compatible with HDMI. Again, DVI-I or DVI-D. Uh, when you're adapting DVI to HDMI, as all of our products feature an HDMI connection, be sure to use a dual link DVI to HDMI adapter. Um, dual link adapters uh, will ensure now, and boy, it was a few slides ago, so I've even forgotten if I've uh, given you this full information, forgive me if it's redundant, but it doubles the DDC line. DDC is very important data that's uh, extended over HDMI. Uh, <coughs> and if you just have HDMI, which is a single link connection, um, and you can find out more about this uh, by Wikipedia uh, dual link DVI, for example. Um, it really does no harm to use a dual link uh, adapter, just basically duplicating that DDC line, whereas a single link adapter, perhaps with that, uh, you know, it's really just an adapter piece, a passive adapter piece. There might be some contacts that aren't quite made properly. So using a DVI dual link to HDMI adapter is definitely a good idea. Uh, when you're installing your CAT cabling, uh, you can damage your CAT cabling with sharp bends, uh, especially near the connector. If you're using shielded CAT cable, a sharp bend of your RJ45 connector, maybe now you take a look and your uh, drain wire is now broken to that head. So make sure uh, that you avoid that. And uh, especially with CAT6 cable, for example, has that nice spleen inside of it. Um, that usually is there to... Uh, in, in, by nature of it just prevents you from sharp uh, bending of the cable. Um, <clears throat> shielded cat cable. Some of the products don't require it, but if you can run it, there is absolutely no reason why not to. It 
helps uh, defeat interference, uh, grounding issues. Um, Cat 6 shielded especially is, the, is a very large bandwidth cable and, uh, and that's why we recommend Cat 6 shielded. And remember, when you're using shielded cabling, here's a picture of a properly soldered RJ45 head with the shielded cat cable. Uh, this is actually Key Digital shielded cat cable, which we'll show you here in a second. Um, that drain wire, as you can see, it comes down around that RJ45 base and now is soldered onto the base, the metal base of that RJ45 connection. So, what can you do to make sure you're cabling uh, your HDMI balance extension or even analog balance extension is <coughs> surefire each and every time? Use key digital uh, shielded cat cabling and uh, RJ45 heads. KD Cat 6 STP1X is the model number for our 1,000 foot spool of our shielded cat cable. And <coughs> KD RJ45 SC, as in RJ45 shielded connector, is the model number of said connector. Um, what makes this such a good cable versus other cat cable that is out there in the marketplace? This, for one, is designed by key digital engineers for video audio extension, not for data. This is not a data cable, so to speak. Um, <coughs> this cable, as, as we discussed earlier, all cat cabling is, is uh, four different twists to each pair uh, of, the, of the four pairs of a shielded, of, of a cat cable, I should say. Um, <coughs> this cable is all equally twisted, equally twisted from uh, all four pairs. Additionally, they are minimally twisted really providing uh, extended performance that in many products cases, not just key digital products, but we're able to, to work at 160% uh, max performance distance. And we do have uh, some documentation on that on key digital, on the key digital product pages. So 160% performance, well, you know that there are some products that require shielded Cat6 cabling from key digital. Uh, what happens when you use it for products that do not require shielded cat cabling? Well, we've seen this chart here before where you have your typical cat5 performance, the raw error rate, and the correction, uh, and the cliff that results at, say, approximately 150 feet for 1080p, depending on the balance. Well, what if we told you we could give you 160% um, performance, meaning getting you another 100 feet and essentially using key digital cat cable, as this new red wire is, delivering 250 feet maximum distance for 1080p. Now, many of your installations are right on that cliff and it may be safe today. But as you know, cat cable and environmental factors are in constant flux. They naturally unwind over time, for example. Pushing that cliff out, that extra 100 feet, for example, in some of our products case, is really going to be, uh, uh, to going to create uh, an installation, installation that is foolproof and something that you will not have tech calls and uh, have to send a tech on next year uh, or a few years down the line. Okay, so what else can be done to ensure your HDMI balance installation or any balance installation uh, really is foolproof? Um, as it pertains to HDMI, uh, Key Digital has had for a number of years a very handy piece of equipment that has really uh, resolved the number one complaint uh, in regards to HDMI that we've heard over the years is that HDMI is not a locking connector. It's more of a uh, stress-based or tension-based connector versus, say, a locking BNC connector, a VGA connector with the uh, screw locks, uh, a way to secure it in position. HDMI is not. It is tension-based. So every key digital part with an HDMI connection on it features a screw terminal directly uh, dead center uh, and right slightly above the uh, top of the, uh, the broad uh, portion of the HDMI uh, port. And um, many key digital parts, in fact, uh, include a clip, what we call KD HDMI clip, in the packaging with it. Um, of course, this screw is actually very 
uh, commonly found not just for key digital parts but in electronic parts in general. Um, maybe not your very low end pieces but certainly your mid to, to high level pieces of HDMI equipment will feature this screw terminal and the reason why is because that screw is actually the functionality of that screw is to, uh, to secure the HDMI chip into place on your displays and your HDMI sources. So Key Digital for a number of years now has been offering KD HDMI clip. Uh, if you purchase that SKU, it is sold in a bag of 20. Um, additionally, it's included in uh, a number of our current products. Let's take a look at which ones. From our Balan family, the KD CAD HD 500, that's your HD base T, 1080p uh, 60 frames per second at 300 feet, 1080i, 720p, 1080p24 at 500 feet for the FW version, of course, that also includes it. Your KD BBTX and KD BBRX, the Smart Balance, also include HDMI clips. Uh, KD CAD HDX also includes it. Uh, and keep in mind with any of these parts, however many HDMI connections on there is equal to however many HDMI clips will be included in the package. From our Matrix family of products, HDMI Matrixes, KD, HDMS 8x8, that's our Hercules series, 8x8 HDMI Matrix that we'll certainly be discussing in length later in the uh, curriculum here. KD HDMS 4x4 is also a Hercules series HDMI Matrix. KD HDMSW 4x4, our Phantom series HDMI Matrix, and KD HDDA 1x1. We label it here as a booster. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about it here uh, twice throughout this present uh, this this curriculum. Once here, uh, actually, right now, and then later in uh, section 1.3 as well. So this is uh, HD DA one by one. It is a part of our Phantom series. Now Phantom series again we'll elaborate in one one point three, uh, but Phantom series really is all about delivering key digital HDMI software, firmware, and hardware suite that has for years delivered reliable HDMI switching and distribution uh, and delivering it at a very, uh, very good price point that is able to fit into most custom installations. Uh, KD HDDA 1x1 is an HDMI extender, booster, buffer. Many, many people refer to a part like this as a booster, okay? But uh, that's really kind of selling the product short. This goes above and beyond what a booster can deliver. First of all, it has handshaking of, in, in fact, 10 different handshake settings. Secondly, it has uh, reclocking of your HDMI signal. So we're not going to go into de uh, depth here as far as the handshaking, because again, we'll talk about it uh, in the next section of this training. But we'll instead address here HDMI connectivity repair. When is this used? When is this suggested by Key Digital as a means of uh, repairing your HDMI connectivity? Uh, first and foremost, this is a piece that goes into just about every possible application with an AV receiver. AV receivers, uh, we're not going to name any names here, but certainly any installer can, uh, can identify with either handshaking issues or signal strength issues as caused by an HD, uh, HDMI AV receiver. Maybe, maybe it's because these companies were traditionally audio companies and uh, you know figured, hey, now we can be a video switcher as well thanks to the HDMI port. Well, of course, HDMI is not that easy. It's not just a video and audio signal. There's there's multiple layers of HDMI that we uh, that we'll discuss throughout this curriculum here. <clears throat> now, this piece is fantastic though for a addressing those handshaking issues again. Ten different uh, possible handshaking settings, and b the reclocking. That's especially what we're going to talk about here for connectivity repair. Reclocking is uh, where, where these kind of pieces are traditionally referred to as a booster. Reclocking takes it to the next level. Uh, a booster may be a, or, or an amplifier, maybe I guess to, to sum it up, garbage in, strong garbage out. You know, amplified garbage out. KD HDDA 1x1 as a reclocker is not amplified garbage in. Instead, 
to use that same analogy, it's garbage in, brand new signal out. And that's what reclocking does, and that's the power of reclocking. And that's uh, reclocking is something that is uh, uh, featured not only in this part, but even some key digital balance also feature reclocking. Also, our matrix switchers uh, of the Hercules series, for example, feature HDMI reclocking. And that's how you know that uh, you're not losing any signal. In fact, we're repairing that signal through a piece like this. So this is a fantastic uh, piece of equipment where we talk about the HDMI clip as a means of ensuring you don't lose your picture due to the HDMI uh, connection becoming unseated. This here uh, really uh, helps us out with the actual signal itself and, uh, and repairing that to make sure that it's going to meet the needs of your display. Um, <clears throat> it's also a means of extending your lengths, say you have a 50 foot cable and now they move the display, you need to go another 20 feet, you can put this right there in the middle, 50 footer then the 20, or 50 footer then the 1x1, one one, then the 20. Uh, generally speaking we recommend this to be on the closer side to the, uh, to the destination, to the, to the display device of the system. However, you can see here also in the key benefits that it's possible that also that uh, you can use this as a means of connecting three HDMI cables, 50 footer, 50 footer, 50 footer, with a one by one at each uh, coupling, providing a 150 foot run there, for example. And uh, it's full support of 3D, in fact, full support of all of the HDMI 1.4 features, which are, again, 3D, 4K by 2K resolution, Ethernet over HDMI, and audio return channel. And since all key digital cables support all of those HDMI 1.4 features. Having this in the middle is not going to, uh, to sacrifice supporting any of those features. So this is a very cool piece that we, we refer to here as the fixer. So uh, what better place to talk about it and to insert it into this presentation than here as we discuss uh, connectivity and connectivity repair. Excellent. So, thank you. This has uh, been level one, part two, the key AV essentials where we really emphasize the one-to-one. -one. And any applications where you may have just one source and one display, uh, one source and one output device, <coughs> what uh, type of products are you going to use? Well, again, you're going you're gonna to use cables, you're going to use balance to get there. Uh, we talked about cables and balance in the digital world. We talked about cables and balance in the analog world, so we uh, discussed all of those connectivity types. We introduced you to Key Digital's HDMI cables. Uh, simply put, the best cables at the best price, the latest features, all the support and speeds that you need to ensure there's no sacrificing whatsoever, whether it's a foot and a half cable or a 75 foot cable. We discussed what it means now to be HDMI 1.4 compliant and, uh, and what, uh, what are the, the bullet points that satisfy a product to be, uh, to be compliant with HDMI 1.4. We talked about the marketing approach of HDMI 1.4, that instead you must, uh, you cannot list your product as HDMI 1.4, but instead uh, that you must identify each of the supported features, which is a very good way to go. Um, we discussed Mastering the key AV essentials. How do you master? Well, you need to know when you're using a cable uh, for your one-to-one -one connection, or you need to know when you're using a balance for your one-to-one -one connection. And then we talked about our balance. Key digital balance uh, have certainly brought the utmost in features, uh, the utmost in uh, reliability and performance. We talked about why balance are where they are today with the evolution of silicone chips. Uh, with uh, just taking advantage of the way the twisted pair works. We introduced you to our analog passive balance. Remember, if it's a passive balance in the analog world, there's no equalization, no gain, no adjustments that can be uh, uh, actively handled. Uh, we talked about our active analog balance where power is required on both ends, giving you to, uh, performance up to 1,000 feet. We talked about our, in the HDMI world, our dual cat balance, which do not require uh, shielded cable. They could work with Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, unshielded or shielded. We talked also about our single cat uh, HDMI balance 
delivering not only HDMI video and audio, control, uh, external audio, uh, Ethernet connectivity, etc., all on a single cat. And when it is a single cat balance, must be a shielded cat six cable. And then we introduce you to some of our. Uh, our, our, our niche type solutions, if you will, for connectivity repair. So next is going to be the final part of level one, which is level one part three, where we're going to teach you how to really enhance the key uh, essentials uh, when you have more than just one source and more than just one uh, display or more than a point to point, let's say, uh, system that you need to enable.